Hello, this is African View with me, Yodith Admasu. In this edition, we are going to talk about African journalism. Where is the media going? Where it started? And to talk about this, I have an expert with me who started out as a journalist himself, and now he is the founder and chairperson of a big media outlet, APO. His name is Nicolas Pampigne Moignac. Welcome. Thank you, Yudith. Thank you. And uh, let's start with your journalistic background. Mm -hmm. How you started as a journalist? Why did you see the need to create APO? Well, I started as a, as a local reporter, uh, reporting on uh, really the um, local stories, you know, uh, the um, party in the schools and the um, uh, events in the community and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at first I was covering only a small uh, a small um, a geography and then I expanded. Uh, a few years after I was um, appointed uh, as a correspondent uh, for Europe, covering entire, entire Europe uh, for Gabon News, which, uh, which is um, a Gabonese um, um, media outlet in Gabon in Central Africa. And as a correspondent for Europe, uh, I was well reporting on really everything uh, which is happening related to Africa uh, 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 in uh, in Europe, and um, one of the thing I uh, I uh, did um, uh, within the first months when I started in, in that new position uh, is that uh, you see I, I was supposed to um, um, report on uh, anything from from cultural cultural to sport to uh, diplomacy to etc related to Africa and, and, and across Europe. So obviously it was a. Um, Challenging, you know, you cannot just browse on all the websites of all the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Europe all the time, plus monitor the cultural activity, plus etc. etc. So, obviously, uh, uh, I, I, I started to uh, subscribe to uh, press releases. I said, well, okay, I want to receive their communication, I want to receive their press releases, uh, their Africa related press releases. Uh, if the um, under Minister of um, Foreign Affairs of Germany is traveling to Ghana, mm -hmm. I want to know it uh, because I may want to report on it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, uh, I started uh, um, <coughs> working on that, uh, contacting all this organization from Ministry of Foreign Affairs of uh, all the European uh, country, but also uh, uh, obviously in Europe you have the European Commission, you have the uh, European Parliament, uh, uh, in Roma, in, in Italy you have uh, a lot of UN uh, institutions like the FAO, uh, uh, you have uh, the, um, uh, UNESCO in Paris, so so many uh, organizations, uh, not, not to mention you know, the, the think tanks and think tanks, etc. So a lot of organizations. So I started contacting all of them uh, and uh, uh, asked them to, um, I mean, how I could receive their press releases and news releases and announcement and agenda and stuff. And uh, I find it very difficult, uh, I find it very time consuming. Um, and um, and I, I actually um, 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 re remember it was uh, back in uh, 2007 um, and uh, some uh, uh, people will just tell me, well, uh, if you want to uh, have access to our press release, why don't you just go on our website? Like if I could go on their website, I don't know, two or three times a day to see if mm -hmm. by any chance they added a press release, you know? So. Um, Sometimes it was, it was the answer. The other time, uh, another time, you um, you will have to literally chase to um, to call. I don't know, 15 times during three weeks to actually finally talk to the to the right person and to uh, uh, literally beg that person to add your email address to to the Middle East, etc., mm -hmm. etc. So um, I, find, I find that uh, I really found that very very um, you know um, time consuming, um, hard, challenging. And so I, an, an idea, I mean, came to my mind, which is well, if, it, if it's uh, uh, as dif if it's so difficult for me as a, as a uh, um, um, as a correspondent in Europe to get the press releases from European-based organizations, uh, what does that tell me about um, the uh, the press releases, the news releases of the African institutions? Meaning, are the press releases? of the African Development Bank, of the uh, African Union Commission, we are here in Addis, mm -hmm. of um, the Pan-African Parliament, of the uh, regional bank, you know, the West African Development Bank, etc. Are they reaching the international media community? And so I did a test. I said, well, listen, I'll, I'll 
I'll try to, um, during a few days, I'll try to myself subscribe to the press releases of those mm. organizations, the African organizations. Mm. And, and, well, I, I found that uh, it was um, even more challenging than to get the uh, uh, European uh, uh, press release, the press release from the European organization. So it was, it was very complicated, um, which um, obviously, obviously led me to the conclusion that um, most of the press releases of most of the African organization never reached the uh, international media community. Now, in the meantime, uh, um, I was... Um, uh, uh, having a series, a series of meetings with the president of the African Development Bank at the time, Donald Kaberuka. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, um, I, th I think between uh, 2005 and 2008, we probably met uh, um, three, four times a year. And, um, and each time I would, um, uh, at the end of the discussion, uh, I would ask him, okay, how is Africa doing? Because, of course, he had access to a so, um, lot of information, you know. Mm -hmm. So with Africa doing, etc. And, and I remember the day when he told me, well, listen, we find something, uh, we find something amazing. Um, um, uh, we, we, we st our studies show that uh, apparently there is, a, there is a middle class emerging in Africa. Uh, and, and, and you need to realize what that means. That means that's, uh, 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 that means that's those customers uh, will need uh, banks, cars, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so um, uh, we discussed about that, and we were we were both very excited about 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 that. But remember that at the time the narrative about Africa was all about you know AIDS and misery and mm. you know. It was not a very good image. That that you are trying to make is uh, uh, really good and relevant because as a journalist, that's one of the problems that I faced. You know when we try to do some research on some uh, institutions, their websites is not updated, up to date. Uh, or uh, when you ask for an interview, a press release, that person is not available all of a sudden. So it's not for only for the Europeans, but for uh, Africa. Because they will, the institution or the government is more likely give an interview to an international media. Than an no, I, I know, I know. It's, and it's a shame. It's the same for advertising, which mm -hmm. is even, even worse, right? Mm -hmm. So you will see a government uh, putting an, advertise, an advertisement on a, well, I don't want to mention names, but mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And so, coming back to that discussion as with Donald Kaberuka, the idea was, okay, we're uh, all very excited about that, and, and we say, well, now we need to tell the world. The world needs to know mm -hmm. that something is happening. So it's not, we, we, have, we, have, uh, we have proof that it's not only misery and, and, and AIDS and, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do, how we do how do we make sure the world knows? Mm. And so um, uh, um, uh, that's really where I decided to create it, to create uh, APO Group uh, originally as a as a press release distribution service. So very mm -hmm. simply, what I did is from from my living room, uh, I uh, I stopped uh, um, uh, I stopped working as a journalist and I and I focused for months on this. And what I did is that uh, at first I um, I contacted uh, very uh, you know uh, meticulously one after the other, one step after the other all the uh, African institutions I can, I can identify, uh, regional organization, uh, pan-African organization, etc. And uh, I, I, I begged them to uh, 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 send me their, their news releases and their press releases. And I, end, uh, I ended up, within a span of a few months, I don't know, three or six months, I ended up with uh, receiving the press releases from, I don't know, I don't remember exactly, but probably uh, 60 organization. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, I will receive the press release, some will uh, send the press release in a PDF format, some will send in a Word format, some will uh, made available via RSS feed or some, etc. So I will standardize everything, put all this in the same format, and then I will end up with a feed, uh, a feed of news, a feed of news, release, news releases related to Africa. Uh, and then what I did is that I went to Bloomberg. Mm -hmm. And I went to Bloomberg and uh, I said, listen, uh, how would you like to have a feed of news releases issued by some of the most prestigious uh, uh, African organizations and institutions um, uh, for free, mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will be able to resell that content to your subscribers. And they say, well, if it's free, you know. What, what would you get out of it? What I get out of it is that I was, I was already uh, 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 definitely uh, 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 participating to 
changing the narrative about the continent. I was making the content available. The, the international media, we are not anymore in a position to say, we do not see, we cannot see that there is also good news. The reason why 100% of our media coverage of Africa is bad is because we don't have access to good news. Mm -hmm. uh, they, 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 they couldn't say that anymore. They, 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 they just had to go to Bloomberg and we will see the press release from the African Development Bank saying that the projection, the forecast for the next year, overall of the continent is 3.5%. They, ca they cannot ignore it anymore. Mm -hmm. So what I get out of it in terms of business, well, that's, that's how I started the business. Um, when I first, I first, I didn't start it as a business, as you can imagine. It's really the, the idea was to, to, uh, to, um, 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 to change the narrative about Africa. Uh, I find, I find uh, the, situa the situation very unfair because if you look at it in terms of um, volume of noise, let's say, of media, uh, at the time you would have probably, on a global scale, uh, most of the noise, most of the information about Africa uh, was actually created by the international media, by non-African media, let's say, most of mm -hmm. them available globally, because we never had that African media which has the ability to spread mm -hmm. uh, 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 not only in the neighboring country, but across the world. Uh, and, um, and, and most of that content was negative about Africa. Now, well, we could say that maybe they had an excuse, and the excuse was that, uh, that uh, they didn't know where to find good news. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, the good news were available on Bloomberg Terminal. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the partnership we had with Bloomberg uh, was not with um, the uh, Bloomberg's uh, as a media, it was with uh, the, the Bloomberg business part, which is the Bloomberg Terminal, mm -hmm. which is that uh, uh, terminal you find on, in stock exchanges across the world. Yeah? So we, we very fast signed it with, with Bloomberg, which means that the content was available in literally all the stock exchanges across the world. Uh, and then we signed with Thomson Reuters, with Thomson Reuters Acon, which is the, the older terminal. So when you have an, an agreement with Bloomberg Terminal and Thomson Reuters Acon, you are literally covering all the stock exchanges across the world. Uh, and, uh, and then we signed it with LexisNexis, with Dojo and Factiva, which, was, which are the two leading news aggregators in the world. And then we continue to expand. And uh, as we speak, we have um, uh, a network of um, um, 270 uh, websites which are hosting our content, including CNBC Africa website mm -hmm. or uh, Africa News website, which is a subsidiary of Euronews, News, but also uh, the rest are African indigenous uh, uh, websites in, in all parts of the continent, mm -hmm. in all um, type, of, uh, type of languages. We have uh, our content available on mobiles, uh, on 250 million mobiles across Africa, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et so, that's how it, it, it all started. It started with, uh, it didn't start as a business. It started with uh, that idea that um, the, the, treatment, the treatment of Africa was, in the media wasn't fair. And that idea that uh, the, the good news need, needed, needed a boost. They, they, we needed to be sure they will, they will reach uh, the international uh, media community. So that's how it started. Okay, that's uh, well and good. And uh, we'll talk about uh, its status right now mm -hmm. and uh, sure. your future prospects. Mm -hmm. But now I want to focus on the, you also give trainings, you are here in Ethiopia to give mm -hmm. trainings to Addis Ababa University mm -hmm. and Makale, you mm -hmm. told me. It. And uh, I want to talk about journalism, you know, the, there are different aspects mm -hmm. to journalism and uh, mostly in Ethiopia we kind of follow, it's uh, the developmental kind of journalism, the DJ. How do you see that, you know, for African, uh, Medias, media outlets, journalism that's based on development, that focus on uh, the positive as well as the progressive kind of aspect, you know, to mm -hmm. kind of give a correction for the government. Mm -hmm. You know, this is wrong, this is appreciable, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, instead of sensationalizing everything mm -hmm. and making it uh, look bad. Mm -hmm. As an expert, how do you see the journalism in Africa? Well, first, um, um, before we discuss about the way it's going, first I would like to um, remind that um, um, back in uh, 2012, the World Bank uh, uh, organized uh, the first, uh, the very first, um, and I'm afraid it, it actually remained the first, it was the inaugural one, but I don't think they, they, they had more after that, um, um, Congress, World Congress on Communication for Development. Um, um, and if I remember properly, it was, yeah, 2012. Um, and in, in, in that, in the, during that period, uh, uh, 
um, and I can I think now it, it's it's you know there is I can I can disclose that um, I remember so it was in 2000 well probably nine or something I have a meeting with President Kabiruka uh, President of the African Development Bank at the time and we sit and he's telling me okay something has changed. Uh, I had a meeting with uh, uh, the uh, general manager of the IMF, I had a meeting with the president of the uh, World Bank, and uh, uh, that idea that uh, we can uh, uh, impose, we can decree good governance, we can, we can force the, gov the, the, the African government or presidents, good governance policy and um, to, 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 do, you know, to, to, to avoid corruption and bribery, etc. That idea that we can force them to do it, we gathered uh, World Bank, IMF, African Development Bank at the highest level, mm -hmm. and we just decided that it's not working. And so I was deputy president of the Pan-African Press Association at the time, and so uh, uh, President Kabiruka told me, well, then the plan now is to rely on the media to, uh, to uh, uh, um, uh, make the, the government accountable. Uh, and now we need, to, we need a stronger media landscape um, because the media will be the one which are going to, uh, by spreading the news, by doing investigative journalism, etc., which are going to promote good governments, good governance, and uh, and uh, and also participate to that idea of uh, um, uh, communication for development. The very, the very um, maybe now it's 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 forgotten. It's but 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 the question of communication for development. What it was really, it was about. It was implemented, created uh, by um, uh, the, the donors, so the, the, the co European Commission, World Bank, etc. And the idea was that, well, um, Ethiopia is receiving a donation or aid, or aid for development aid in, of uh, five billion or five million uh, to create um, um, a bridge or whatever. Okay, who, who is going to go take pictures and check? a few months after if that bridge is actually there, mm -hmm. if not the media. That was the point. The, 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 the very concept of communication for development, it was about that. It was about uh, having a strong media landscape, having strong media, because they are the ones which are going to say, OK, uh, citizens, people, look, we received millions for that bridge. The bridge is not there. Mm. You know? Uh, and, uh, and it is actually after that, a few years after that, that we started uh, uh, speaking so much about civil society. And it's kind of cheap, but, 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 but I'm, I'm um, and, and of course right now, civil society can rely on social media, but there was a time where uh, uh, all the institutions were focusing on the media, they were betting on the media landscape to take, to to take the government mm -hmm. accountable. Then you had the uh, civil society, but it was before uh, the, 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 the surge of uh, social media and stuff. So, those, so those civi that's, that civil society during a few years was relying on the traditional media to, to be heard, etc. And then uh, right now, of course, with the, with the social media, we saw this works. And, and of course, it's, it's, they, are, they, are, they can do things on their own with, with yeah. a 